Back here on MLB Now, live at the winter meetings. Brian Kenny here with you. And here are the Pittsburgh Pirates. 76 wins last year. Good young players on the way up, including O'Neill Cruz. Coming up through, Derek Shelton is their manager. He joins us right now. Derek just learned that he's in the showdown. Coming up momentarily. Derek, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you. I'm excited. Uh, got chosen for the showdown. This will be fun. No, we know you're, you're good, clean, fun. We can kick it around a little bit. I won't get you in trouble, all right? Okay. I don't think so. All right. Let me start with your thoughts. Jim Leland uh, at the news conference today, you know, former Pirates manager, going into the Hall of Fame, inducted this summer. Your thoughts on Jim? Super excited. I mean, he's been a big influence on me. He's a sounding board for me. He still lives in Cleveland, or I'm sorry, in, in Pittsburgh. So the, the ability to uh, talk to him on a monthly basis is something that's really exciting. So super excited. Well, what do you run by him then? What do you, Everything. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, from the from the first day I got hired, uh, we had breakfast together. I asked questions about him, about what we do strategy wise. He watches a lot of our games, so it's re it's really important to be able to have a sounding board of someone that that's been through it. You know, I want to follow up on that then. Things are different from Jim's time, right? Managing in the 80s, the 80s players were a little different. I just asked this to Pat Murphy. How different is this generation, and how do you reach them? I, well, I think it is a different generation, and I, and I think that stems, and we could go into a long conversation about travel baseball and how players are, are developed these days, but they're still players, and they still want to get better, and they're still, you know, the, the specific things of what they have to learn to be able to be functional major league players, and I don't think that's changed. In communication with players and, and knowing that they have, that you have their back is something that's really important, and it's something that, that Jim has kind of instilled in our conversations. Okay. Yeah, we could do an hour on that. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> These kids today. Um, you got off to a gangbuster start, uh, then the Reds kind of surpassed you, and time, but it was heartening to see Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, the, you know, that rebuilding process start to bear fruit. Where do you think you are on the win curve? I think we're on the way up, and I think you said that. I mean, you started at the top. I us winning 14 more games in Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. There's a lot of young talent, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of young, exciting players, and it's exciting that, that we're bringing this young group of players age 27 down. You know, I, I think over the last month of the season, we had the two youngest rosters in baseball. That's exciting. And then the other thing is, is, you know, we had a team in the playoffs in our division and, and then two teams that were within two wins of being there. The National League Central is on the way up. Yeah, it's nice to see, too. Like, again, that to see teams rebuilding, using their own players, and have it work that way. O'Neill Cruz, what's the timetable for him? How is he? Timetable is good. He, he's in the Dominican right now. He played in Dominican Instructional League games. Um, you know, one of the highlights of my days over the last probably month was watching the video every day come in of him uh, taking ground balls, hitting, playing in games, stealing bases, doing the things that O'Neill Cruz does. And you know, we're looking forward to him having a, a really successful 24 season. Yeah, he missed him for like the whole year, all that you know excitement. And then Ellie Dela Cruz comes up, and you're like, whoa, look at these two shortstops in the same division. I mean, it's amazing that. Those two at 6'6", six, six, right? Yeah. <laughs> These I mean, guys coming up the way they are. You're talking 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, I mean, they look like NBA players walking around, and they're both really exciting players, and it's going to be fun in the National League Central, you know, over the next uh, five, six, seven years, whatever, watching these two guys go head-to-head. -head. All right, ready to do the showdown? Let's go. All right, let's do the showdown. The showdown is not meant to cause offense or harm. The viewer acknowledges any reliance on the accuracy or completeness of said content should be done at their own discretion. The host apologizes in advance for any affront as a result of personal attacks. There it is, Derek Shelton. You've wandered into my town now. No, actually, this is not my town, but anyway, we'll have a fun. Kick it around. All right. I think the pitch timer is like the best thing in a generation of baseball. They want to make it even faster. Does it make sense to you to trim those extra two seconds? No, I don't, I don't think it needs to be. I would say no. I think it's good where it's at, and I do like it. I think I wouldn't mind seeing it. Like, again, runners on base now make it 18 instead of 20 seconds, but I'm good with where it is, I have to say. I think it worked. Everything's good, right? I would agree with that. It's good. Uh, you know, I came into it not knowing, but I think it was very good for the game, and I would prefer that we stayed where it's at. Where are you on automatic strike zone? I am in favor largely I'd like it to work perfectly of course where are you uh, I do not think I'm in favor of it the challenge system is something that interests me but automatic strike zone does not interest me. all right so you so we could do automatic strike zone but give challenges to where you could challenge what the umpire is saying I, I think the challenge system from everybody that I've talked to that was in AAA this year that seems to be the way that would be more consistent okay see we're, we're being reasonable <laughs> here we'll take that is because like, you've made the step at least to we're doing it but now we're still using the umpires but you can challenge how many like how many challenges 
challenges could you have? I don't know. There's someone that's way above my pay grade and a lot smarter than me. I mean, maybe we could put you on uh, on that. I'm glad to help <laughs> because I don't know because you tell me if I keep hearing three, three, the leadoff hitter is going to use three. Well, right? I think that's going to be the biggest challenge of it is like how teammates go about using them and then right. who uses them and then does a veteran use it and a young player use it because yeah. we see yeah. guys that are really good at it like Andrew McCutcheon will dominate this. This right. is a guy that knows he knows the, the zone. zone, right? So, but, but other guys are going, "Oh, I don't like that call. Give it to you know, like, right. hey, wait, no, you can't do that." <laughs> right. So I, I think it's going to be interesting within the dynamic of the team of who uses them. We saw Craig Council go to the Cubs, eight million a year. Are managers underpaid? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't get easier that than that, is Derek. A loaded question. But, uh, I would say if it's is that a yes, no? That's a, you can go in any nuance <laughs> yeah, you want. I, I mean, I, I think what what you know what counts was able to do is important for us moving forward as a as a group mm -hmm. all right um you're facing otani in a playoff series this is all theoretical you're facing him and he's pitching right he's going to pitch and he's going to hit this is a year down the road you expect him to start and they announce just ahead of time he's not going to start he's going to be a relief pitcher maybe two three appearances in a playoff series are you glad about that or are you not glad about that uh, I would honestly say I'm not glad about that. You know, depending on the way the playoff structure is and how many days off, he can impact a lot more games by pitching in more games. So right. I would I would rather be one and done and and then move on. I'm interested in that answer. I think that's that's how it would be. So why don't teams do that? Why don't you why don't teams say, hey, we have this ace instead of giving him one day, which maybe you get six, seven innings. But instead of having have that guy roam high leverage, why don't teams do that? I think it's interesting. I think depending on, you know, playoff teams usually have two or three guys that are established starters. So you're mm -hmm. planning on those starts. If you were in a position where you were going to be less traditional and more aggressive, I think you could see teams do that. The player's health would be the biggest thing, how they're going to rebound, how they're going to be able to, to bounce back, and then what they're going to be able to give you would be probably the major factors there. All right. I want you to give me a Hall of Famer. I'm going to give you mine first. To me, having studied this now for decades, I, I've arrived at Don Mattingly's a Hall of Famer. And for everybody that says, well, he needed to do it longer, I say, who says? Like, the writers don't say. Nobody the Hall of Fame doesn't say. He was the best player in the American League for four years. He's the standard by which other players are measured. Everyone talks about him with this reverence, and yet when it comes down to, would you put him in the Hall of Fame? Well, I wish he had done it a little longer. I, I, I find that answer unacceptable. Your thoughts on Don Mattingly first? Well, Don Mattingly first, yes, he's a Hall of Famer. I, I'm there personally biased there I mean when I was a young Yankee minor leaguer he was very influential to me so yes he's a Hall of Famer there's thousands of guys who say a version of what you're saying yeah. saying Donnie's the best he was the best guy I was coming up I, I modeled myself after him so everyone has this feeling about Donnie it's yes. translate yeah. into that right I, I would say yes 100% okay then even statistically like I can show like for four years like this guy was a the, the dominant player not striking out hitting with power nobody has really done that in the game in the last 40 years all right give me a Hall of Famer so I give you two it. Sure, yeah. So I'm going to stay home in Pittsburgh okay. and Parker. Dave Parker. Dave Parker's a good Dave, candidate. Dave Parker should be a yeah. Hall of Famer. And then I'm going to throw one at you that probably is a little less traditional. Okay. Bobby Gritch. Bobby Gritch should be a Hall of Famer. Bobby Gritch is a long-time, like, sabermetric pick. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm a little biased there. My dad played in the minor leagues with Gritch. Really? Uh, yeah. You know, on a team that had Baylor and Joe Altabelli managed and Johnny Oates was on. The other, Ron Shelton, who okay. wrote Bull Durham, was on yeah, yeah. also. But if you look at Bobby Gritch's number, I told you earlier when I saw you, like, let's get, uh, let's get analytical. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Bobby Gritch should be in the Hall of Fame. If you, if it, war wasn't used back then, wasn't invented back then. But if wins above replacement existed, we'd be, he'd hit the Hall of Fame, he'd hit the ballot, and he'd get voted in. Yes. Because, like, I think 50 should get serious consideration. 60 normally gets you in. Bobby Gritch is at 70. 70. 70. 70. Right. Yeah. And he's hitting in a dead ball era, playing second base, so we don't appreciate the numbers. But in context, no, he's a great player. You're yeah, right. and he's, I mean, large human being, stood in on the double play probably as well as anybody in the game. Yeah, that's my out of the box Hall of Fame. We have to have you on more. We're agreeing on everything. <laughs> this is great. Why do I need Dan O'Dowd to give me so many troubles? I don't get it. Derek, thank it. you so right, much. Thank you for having Best me. Best of luck this year. No, you guys are improved. Look forward to seeing you guys this year. Thank you for having thank me, you. On, Brian. Derek Shelton there, Pittsburgh Pirates.